Could she really be here, waiting for me? everybody to the grinding gear podcast i'm your host kyle ferguson garrett is away on business he will return next week i am joined this week by none other the big face reveal we should have done like a whole youtube thing we should have made it a bigger deal i'm sorry i'm sorry uh but but we're here with our msq curator the man who got me into final fantasy 14 john jagger thank you for joining me john Thanks for having me. It would have been disappointing. The face reveal, they would have been like, oh my gosh, look at Kyle. Look at Garrett. This is clearly building. And they would have been like, he doesn't have hair at all. This didn't escalate. I expected escalation. (laughs) It's always escalating around here. Now, thank you all for joining us. Welcome. Welcome. We have a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk a lot about Final Fantasy later on. There's plenty of things to talk about in the meantime. Uh, How fortuitous that we are going to talk a little bit of Silent Hill today. You may... uh, You may hear me a sniffle here and there as we have some serious smoke going on in the Pacific Northwest and outside it looks like Silent Hill. So, you know, it's it's, it's spot on, spot on. It's appropriate. Yeah. It's that atmospheric tone. We just needed to burn down a natural resource. But if you're not familiar with John Jagger, you should be because he does one of my favorite podcasts in the whole world. Core. Not the core, just core, all all caps. Core, yeah. all caps. There's just branding core. to it. Yeah, it's good. I like it. I like it for core gamer. Do you guys still use that tag? Is it still? Like, I don't know. Thing? Scott typed that, yeah. and I was like, "Why did he type that? I don't feel like I'm a core <laughs> gamer at all. I'm on the show." It, it kind of gives it like a PC, the cores, all the cores, the multi-threading, the core, you know, the Intel yeah. technology. And then he's just like, "Well, here's what I played on my Switch." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I also get to do a D&D show with you that just wrapped up. There will be dungeons. Yep. And uh, then you are the craftless rogue on Twitch where you play many a Final Fantasy game. Yeah, I've done a lot of them. We've played through nine. Uh, nine total, not Completed. just nine. Okay. People are like, yeah, he did it. He did nine. Great. What's next? Uh, yeah, I've played uh, one through nine. We're working on 10 right now, and uh, it's been fun getting into it and, and seeing where all this came from. How's um, how's 10 hold up? Okay, well... <laughs> it's the only one I ever played, and I played it at the perfect time where I yep. wanted to kiss a girl in a lake. And that was, that was like my there, entire there, being. There you go. Yeah. You know, that is the perfect age for it. 10, actually, I think 10 holds up really well. Uh, I okay. think 10 uh, from a from a like battle system like standpoint, like I got in fast paced, frantic, like especially coming off of nine, like it just felt really good. Uh, the story's interesting. The characters are good. You know, PS2 shown its age. It, you know, there was a time when I looked at those graphics and I would say, it's not going to get better than this. This looks like yeah. real life. You can't get more real than real, Kyle. You can't. Uh, that's what I believed. It it doesn't look real anymore. No, uh, it's uh, a little ha- it's a little haunting at times. It's a little rough. The pants but, don't uh, hold up. The the weird the the blitz no, ball. No. I remember there's that. There's a shocking lack of pants in that game. There are oh. people that are like, I don't know. There's a strip down the middle. We're good. We'll let the cheeks just ride out the side. I remember that blitz ball orb filling and just being yep. like, oh my god, like this is the future. It's it's kind of why I look at the Final Fantasy 16 trailer and go. What are you even about? Because in the past, Final Fantasy trailers from the outside were just like graphics and you're just like, whoa, like this is like Toy Story to the 80s. Like, oh, my God, it'll never be more real. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I I don't I don't know where to take it. I don't know how to how to process it, but we'll we'll get into all that. Oh, Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got lots to say on that. Top here. We actually you and I got to play a little bit of the Dark Tide beta this past weekend. We did. How'd that land for you? Pretty good. I'm going to say the important things are there. Like, I I definitely walked away going, all right, we got in. We had multiplayer fun. We laughed. Yes. 
Uh, we criticized a non-voice chat squad mate that we got partnered up with. So multiplayer <laughs> is happening as it's supposed to, you know, immediately ostracized the guy not in comms. Yep. And so uh, that part all felt good. It felt really bare bones and light as far as content. But they even admit on their document, you know, like, hey, there's going to be more guns. There's going to be more levels, more perks, more enemy types, more maps. All that stuff is supposed to be in the final game. And so there was this general feeling of like, man, I got like two guns. And there's not a lot of enemy types. There's like three guys running around. A lot of them, but the same three guys just running around. And so I definitely wanted more, which is a good feeling to have. Uh, that aspect left me a little wanting. But that's something that could be addressed in the main game. So it's not like turning me off of the game or anything like that. Yeah, Vermintide's loot system is terribly obtuse when you get into it because you're getting all these points and then you get a currency that you don't know what to do with and then you get like boxes, but I don't think we could even open the boxes yet. The music was no, incredible. You got to get a key. You got to do, you got to take it to the thing. You got to have a key for it. You have a key for this thing. It was, it was a lot. I love the music, like the, the combat organ, heavy metal Victorian whatever that was it was great yeah, yeah. And they, they've done some great design like the uh the spellcaster was now a sniper rather than an aoe and when we played vermintide i always felt like the aoe wizard lady was required to just deal with yeah. boards so they're yeah good i had a i had a good time with it um i again i just want i just want more i just need to see what that game actually is but it, it played well we had a few you know, weird little i got hit so hard the game crashed you know, so there, there's some clunkiness. They got sure. a month to figure it out, uh, you know, but honestly, I will say this. If you want to sell damage in a video game, getting hit so hard that the game crashes really made me feel it. <laughs> there was definitely a sense of, oh, no, I got hit bad. That was that was rough. So it's uh, it's a quality, quality game. Well, we had a plethora, a burden, a confusing uh, assault of announcements from silent hill this week <laughs> so i asked i asked you before the show hey do you have anything about silent hill and you said well it's complicated which is perfect so uh yeah so, so please uh before i share my own complications how do you feel about oh, silent God. hill in I, general i love that we both live in a complicated place when it comes to silent hill yeah. because on one hand it feels like we've been just waiting so long to hear people talk about silent hill again like, yeah, maybe one day they'll talk about it and it won't be a pachinko machine or something like that. Maybe they'll actually make a game at, at some at some point. But it's also you you can't forget that Silent Hills was a game that was supposed to come out, that everybody played this game called PT and it was wonderful and weird. And then Konami was like, no, nope, we're not making it. We're canceling it. And also, you better not ever remove PT off your PlayStation hard drive or we're just not going to ever let you download it again because uh, we're never making that game. And so you look at their announcements, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, look at them trying to make everybody happy about Silent Hill. But at the same time, you're like, but didn't you just really break my heart when it came to Silent Hill? You know, it's like getting a love letter from your ex. You're like, well, wait a minute. I feel complicated about this relationship. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I want to be excited, but I, I've been hurt before. Yeah, it, it's, it's a weird place where the content creators, uh, content creators is like YouTubers, so the, the, the makers of Silent Hill seem to not understand what Silent Hill was about. I feel like, I feel like oh, an English this, teacher. Yep. Every time I talk about Silent Hill, because I'm like, did you understand the deeper meaning of it? And people are like, well, I want to be chased by Pyramid Head. I'm like, no! Pyramid <laughs> Head was a manifestation of his horniness because he was alone for three years. That's why Pyramid Head exists. It's, it's phallic in nature. It's not supposed to be everywhere. Well, why were there nurses? Well, because the nurses, with the, the nurses are sexy. Well, why is there a leg monster? Because he's into legs and the leg monster and the pyramid. You're like, just go with me on this. And they're like, great, 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 great. So we'll chase you with ghosts in the room. And you're like, why? 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 Why, why am I in a room? Like, the room functioned. It was spooky. But they've lost that, like, why are there dogs? Well, we don't know. 
Why is there yeah. fog? Well, the, the the fog was this machine, this uh, this this necessity because of the graphics of the time. You couldn't show the whole town, so they came up with yeah. a cute way to not render everything. And by accident, almost like George Lucas saying, you kind of made this phenomenal thing called Silent Hill Two. Oh, I was so excited for Downpour. Oh, I was, I was so stoked because the idea of a convict with all his baggage everything he's bringing to the yes. table yeah yes yeah. who knows what that would manifest in inside and what it, what it manifested in rust again just rust and random monsters yeah so it's funny i was actually going to save uh this criticism uh this complicated feeling for when we talked about the the f trailer um <laughs> i just went deep i have i'm just uh, I, but, I was unloading uh, no i'm i'm a hundred percent with you is not a lot of people really appreciate silent hill as a it's a reflection of you it's your internal horror and when you think about it like it's a really cool concept to be able to make a bunch of sequels because each sequel could be so incredibly different from the one before and it turned into this thing where it's like well and then pyramid head shows up and it's like well wait a minute but no that was one person's horror yeah. we're in a different game now that's somebody else and it, it's kind of almost a victim of its own popularity because people are like, no, we need sexy nurses and we need uh, we need pyramid head and we need lots of fog and we need normal looking things to get rusty and dirty and be gross. And it's like, well. I get why you want that, but that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a reflection of the person that's in the town. Like they should be bringing a unique experience every time they come into the town. And I don't know if you want to put a pyramid on somebody else's head and have them have a different job. I guess you could do that, but like at least seem to make the effort. It, it, that's actually what I liked about the the F trailer. It feels weird every time I, I say. Oh, it's it. well, it's a music it's a note, right? It's a choice, a music thing, like a music note, uh, F uh, for for. Uh, falsetto. What, what? What? It means big, right? Uh, it isn't what well, in the sequel to Beauty and the Beast. There was the giant evil organ that was mm -hmm. named <laughs> Forte. <laughs> Forte. Yeah, Forte. Is that it? I, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. It's a musical thing. It is okay. where my brain landed. F means one thing to me. Yeah. Oh, like and, uh, uh, F's in chat kind that of thing. Doesn't, like... doesn't get. <laughs> Forget about what that says about what Silent Hill would mean to me if I was there, but F means one thing. And okay. I, I feel like I feel like Konami finally has F to gives uh, about Silent Hill is the uh, headline that just writes itself because they did not care. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, guys, Konami's back. We love you. What you, you thought we forgot about Silent Hill? No, we look at all the Silent Hill content we're getting. It, it's, it's weird. It, it it reminds me a lot of um it wasn't Prometheus. What was the one after Prometheus where the robot went and did his own thing for a while and it was really solid. Oh, uh, Alien Covenant? Yes, Alien Covenant, which shouldn't have yeah. been an aliens movie. Like there's no reason at the end they should have fully formed into xenomorphs. It should have just been a sci-fi movie. But Yeah, they, they put squeezed... Alien on there to get yeah. people to go to see the movie. They They're squeezed like, in Mickey yeah, Mouse at the it. end and, and and everyone's like, "Oh, I love Mickey Mouse. I'm going to go see this movie." I, I this this trailer is uh for f <laughs> for big f's in chat uh it's 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 haunting you know it's certainly it, it's 1960s japan gives yeah. me a little bit of a fatal frame vibe in that way you know you got some shrines you got kind of a pseudo undersea coral reef growy business instead of your usual rust yeah, which is so interesting. Ch changing it up. Yeah. yeah, and there's not a single pyramid head or sexy nurse to be found. Nope, nope. You got a pipe though. That you're gonna hit. You got things. a pipe. You, know, you so gotta have combat. a pipe. You got, you got, yeah. you got your pipe. Uh, there's a doll. You know, there's, there's, her face falls off, which is creepy. Um, yeah, that would be creepy. If yeah. so, if I saw someone's face fall off, I would go. Not a good time for me. Uh, you know, it's it's that weird thing we humans have. Where if the dude is just a little too tall, we all lose our minds. Mm. And when your face falls off and there's a big hole underneath, a la Dark Souls or any other property, you go, oh, I'm interested. <laughs> oh, I see. Terrifying. This your is... fingers are exceptionally long? That's, that's terrifying to me. I, I've heard the writer 
batted around as someone who's really, really good at horror. Uh, I'm not familiar with any of their other products. Uh, looks like they do a lot of illustrations, novels, screenplays, but I haven't seen any of these. Uh, this would be uh, Ryukishi 07, which hmm. uh, I guess their name is taken from a Final Fantasy game or something along those lines. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, the term Dragoon. So, oh, okay, great. Yeah. We got Dragoons right in this. Well, yeah, they yeah. understand death quite well, so it doesn't <laughs> shock me. But the the real meat, because that, that's a trailer. It's going to be a game. There's there's like also like uh, Ascension, which is perhaps a live stream co-op augmented reality or something. And then there's Townfall, which just has no presence. Immersive project, <laughs> but the real meat, of course, is, is the uh, Silent Hill 2 teaser trailer that had the uh, the re have they have they put the their R on this? What 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 kind of what kind of oh, R we that, have this? we decided if we're calling this a remaster or a remake? Yeah, I think this falls into remake territory, right? Okay. It would have to be. Uh, the problem is it's been so long since I played Silent Hill 2 that was the audio from it. Was that a new record? They weren't just pulling in the old audio tracks, right? Uh, it's hard to tell because yeah. the dialogue is just cheesy enough that even well delivered, you kind of just go, well, was the dialogue this good back in the day or is it just a little bit cheesy now? It's, um, yeah, because there's only really the screamy parts where he would have been like emoting heavily. So I think it's new. I really like his face. Like his face is very relatable. Uh, it, it, it functions. His old face was, oh my goodness, some of those scenes with like the weird guy eating pizza and stuff. Like it's just, what was, <laughs> just the, and then like, why? What, why, how did you get here? Like, it's just so deadpan. There's a lot of opportunity yeah. to embellish it and make it big and make it good. It's a great story for sure. So same, same script, probably different people reading it, probably reading it better. I think that puts it firmly in the remake territory. Okay. I think like so a too. very, a very respectful remake. Um, I mean, we'll see. It might go the it might go the way of Resident Evil 2. Like, who knows if they keep literally the same game in there or if it's just kind of like a, a greatest hits collection of things you expect to be in there. But um, uh, it makes it sound like it's a, a remake. Explain that for a moment, because you you're a big fan of the Resident Evils. You you beat them with all the characters and multiple yeah. times but i know the story diverges and like the real story is on flair is that <laughs> play but you can get the full story you just gotta beat it twice yes is basically then you get the final boss and the final cutscene. yeah i'm not a 50 percenter like some people i record yeah. podcasts with does it play yeah. credits does, does it like play credits like it's over or does it actually just kind of end and then it, it does play do it credits, okay. but it's a it's a real abrupt credit. So the first time you beat the game, there's a moment where like it depends on which character you're playing. But Leon just like I, Leon comes bursting in and she's just like, Leon. And then credits like you, you're going, really? This is where you're going to end the game. Just somebody's just like, oh, it's good to see you. And then credits. Uh, and then when you play it the second time, that scene continues and then you get to the actual ending. Is it so. unclear? Like uh, the, the the menu pops up and you have to go like new game, select character or? Uh, they call it, so you can do uh, Leon A, Claire A, and then you can do Leon B, Claire B. So you can, it, there's basically four different ways you can play it. But A and B are basically, they are the same roughly. It's it's all a result of the the PlayStation method of like they had discs, right? So you would right. put in Leon's disc to play Leon and then you put in Claire's disc to play Claire. Um, and then they had an A scenario and a B scenario. And it's it's gotten a little muddier with the re remake of it. Um, but yeah, it is a different perspective because they get separated at the beginning and you follow whichever character they meet different characters, you know, Claire meets Sherry and Leon meets Ada. Um, so their adventures are different. And then you see the other perspective when you play as the other character. Um, and I don't remember if this ended up being true or not. I think there were elements of it being true in, in the PlayStation game 
I don't know if it's in the remake, but it used to be that if you took upgrades, if you were playing Leon A, for example, and you picked an, up an upgrade, then when you played as Claire B, that upgrade was gone because Leon took it. Oh, huh. so there's a little bit of strategy like leaving an upgrade for your second playthrough. Yeah. Okay. So this is being made by the Blooper. No, wait. Bloober? Bloober. Bloober. Bloober team. <laughs> Blooper's not a real great... I mean, I don't know. You you could decide how good Bloober is, but Blooper is probably not what you want to sell a, a game as. They're owned by Tencent. 22%. Which is about what Tencent owns of everything. Yep. They like, they like that 20%. Uh, they are a uh, based out of Poland. And I would know them from Layers of Fear which I guess means they're really oh, good yeah. at the, the peely thing. Like anytime anything's going to peel off or do the Silent Hill transformation, they're going to be all about it. It'll be great in that regard. Layers of Fear was actually pretty good. It was all right. I, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't terribly deep, but it, it had a cool horror element. It, it was kind of made on the tail end of that amnesia, Dark Descent time period. So not really madness mechanics, but a lot of things being based on where you look around. Yeah. It felt like amnesia for uh, simple people, like, <laughs> which was me. Like I say that, I say that with all the love and respect in the world. Cause that was me. It was like, we're not going to get real deep on this. Like you're going to go into a room. You're going to look around. You're going to turn around. The room's going to be different. And I'm like, Oh, that's scary. That's mm. good. Amnesia was more like, let me tell you a story. I, I was do, like, okay. I do like okay. that. I'm, I'm playing through Jedi fallen order right now and there's a couple times where you you know half dream or whatever and you turn around now you're in an imperial hallway and i'm like oh my oh the graphics you did it like uh, <laughs> uh, that stuff just tickle me there before yeah that oh. stuff really tickles me uh that's why i enjoyed dead space 3 where many people yeah. didn't uh they also did the observer which i think was that weird live action one or maybe it was not live action uh, i think it had elements of it right yeah it had people <laughs> 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 I, think there were, I think there were people in it it had the the actor in it yep the uh, actor what, yep that was a yeah, dude's Rutger face Hauer. Yep. yeah he was in there oh uh, speaking of um you know oddities I, should i <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> uh, spoiler alert for silent tune i mean i guess it's being remade um i'll be i'll be i'll be brief do you think they'll keep the juice thing or do you think modern audiences aren't prepared for the juice thing? I don't remember the juice thing. The trash shoot. I don't remember. It's been a long time. I played it like when it came out and I haven't played it since. Like, and I don't think really... that's stuck. Hold on. If I search for this, will I find it? Maybe. Silent Hill 2 juice. Old survival games had some bizarre things in them. <laughs> and sometimes you would go around and collect like a candy bar. So you could melt it into a hole, uh -huh. which allowed you to put a handle in. And now you could open the trap door because you found the match in the candy bar and oh, the handle. Oh, uh, just uh, so super obscure puzzles. Yeah, like really like bizarre inventory puzzles. Or will those be updated? I kind of hope they're there, right? Like there's a part of me that just wants the ridiculousness of it. But I also played through the the most recent Monkey Island game that came out, which has always kind of poked fun at that sort of thing. Like, you know, the most notorious one from the first one is a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. And it's like, well, this is an extremely complicated item. What am I supposed to do with this? And it just sort of leans into that uh, ridiculousness of items in adventure games. And so the, the new one didn't really do that as much. You could kind of understand where they were going with things because uh, we live in a more logical society, I guess. <laughs> and um, so there's a part of me that just wants to go, no, go chaos. Like, yeah, of course you you put sodas down a garbage chute. You know, of like, of course you do. Why wouldn't you? Right. You have to try, just try everything till it works. Just click the button and see if something happens. The, the radio thing like there's so much about silent hill 2 that just works so well it was such a great uh co-op game too like one person play and everybody gathered around watching the horror movie it was cinematic enough like that silent hill has never done combat particularly well but that's kind of a survival horror element like you can't aim your gun right 
things have gotten quite a bit better in Resident Evil Town. Uh, I mean, of course, with like seven and eight, those are just action games along yeah. the way through. But uh, like Resident Evil Two, I remember watching playthroughs of, and that thing goes full blown action in the end. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird um, how actiony it's gotten. I I always thought that the feeling like you couldn't accurately defend yourself, you just kind of use it as a last resort. Um, made the game scarier and I feel like horror games have diverged in those kind of two camps where it's like we're not even going to give you weapons now like you thought it was scary when the weapons were bad now we're just not going to even give you one and that can sometimes be frustrating because you're walking around and you're like well look at all I just saw a, a chainsaw sitting back there and you showed it to me because I was it was scary but why am I not picking it up and using it to defend myself and then you know even Resident Evil has now gone the way of you know, kind of taking four's combat model and applying it to all their games going forward. So you always feel like shooting is a bit of an option and you're just limited by ammo. Yeah, it, 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 it's just a choice. I don't think, um, I, I know, I don't remember the name of it, the original Amnesia project they did, the first game. But it had like a gun, it had a stick. I think you also got some basic weaponry in Soma to like kind of glitch out the robots and ultimately it worked as a disservice. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. This is supposed to come out in actually do they even put a date on this? No. No, they're, they're <laughs> no, just they're, they're just, just like they're hey, announcing. They're announcing hey, all kinds of things. We're saying Silent Hill a bunch of times and hoping you get excited and forget about the time we uh we didn't like Silent Hill as much. So that's the one, like, is, is that the, the crux of your complications is the Silent Hill thing in the house with the lady that followed you and the baby in the sink? I mean, I wanted to see what that game was going to be, right? Like, for good or for bad, I never really beat the demo. Once the mystery of the demo got solved and it, you kind of figured out what PT was and, and how to beat it, it got a little silly. You know, like you got people yelling names into their controllers and stuff like that, trying to figure this thing out. I don't know if that's a game I wanted, but I have to be honest, that game legitimately terrified me. Yeah. Like they created a genuinely haunting atmosphere. And I even remember playing uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 and you could stumble uh, on a camp where all the soldiers there were already dead when you got there and the little... Uh, radio in the tent was playing the audio, the same audio from the radio in PT. And I got freaked out in Metal Gear Solid just from that, hmm. you know, as hammy and cheesy as it was that don't touch that dial now. Like it just somehow got into you and it just lived in there. And you were like, oh my gosh, this game's really scary. So there is a part of me that wants to really wanted to see what that game was again, for good or for bad. No guarantee that it was going to be a good game. For all we know, is going to be about carrying luggage across the country or something. I don't know. But <laughs> eventually that game was made. <laughs> yeah, so he got to, he got to do it. And then he made a director's cut because the company was in charge of had to hold him back. He had to do a director's cut version of it. Um but I I I really wanted to see it and it was sad to see it get canceled and Konami really cut ties with wanting to be a gaming company for a while. And I think that there is a part of me that goes, "Well, why are you back?" You know, um, what it, are the machines? It, I, uh, I, I'm not familiar. So I saw this week, like Godzilla got merged with Ava Unit One, and people are like, ah, oh. oh, it's just a machine. Uh, so what's the machine you mentioned earlier? Uh, is it Pachinko machines? Yeah. I don't even know if I got that right. It's a it's a very popular um, in Japan. They have Pachinko machine parlors where you go in, and it's the thing where you drop the little ball in, and it goes down the top, and uh, it's all the nails and you know, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. yeah, and ends up in a hole in <laughs> yeah. the bottom, and then Chuck E. Cheese yeah, they, tokens come they out. They make those. Konami makes those. Okay, and they're probably way more profitable than making a real video game or something like that. Yeah, so they, you know, that's what they wanted to work on, and that's what they were turning all our, you know, you fire Kojima, and then you're like, hey, Metal Gear Solid isn't going anywhere. He's back in pachinko form, and you know, get excited. Nobody's ex nobody's excited. Somebody maybe I don't know. Um, but it was, uh, it was a bit of a bummer and I don't forget those things easy. It doesn't, I'll judge a game when it comes out. If the game comes out and it's great, I'll play it. Um, but I'm hesitant 
you know, like I said at the beginning, it's like, you know, having a bad breakup with an ex and then you get a text from her and it's like, what you doing? It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> why, <laughs> why are you texting me this? That's not, that's not really uh, what I had in mind for today. What, yeah. what, make video games. No, I mean, we, someday, uh, maybe when Overwatch co-op comes out, then you and I will have another episode where we just sit around and like uh, poke at it. But uh, oh man, we could fill an episode. Oh, that, that just beehive you and I grousing about Overwatch for a while. That beehive is thoroughly poked for sure. Yeah. Uh, with they the don't, they don't need and, it right now. Yeah, no, no, no. And uh, there's all sorts of like other conversations that I think are really interesting being had around the sphere about like what is a score screen and do score screens reduce toxicity and should we have them back? Are they good things to have? Hmm. The most fascinating comparison I saw this week was Overwatch 2 no score screens splatoon detailed score screen like i got kids kids won't be toxic with it we'll give them all the information but we need to worry about those adults yeah it, adults it, can't handle it you give adults info and they they're out of control well let's wander our way towards that final fantasy 14 discussion but first a little stop in the trailer park yep Mm, yep. Mm -hmm. So we got the official, pardon me, started to loop, uh, the <laughs> official <laughs> Final Fantasy 16 story trailer uh, dropped today? Today on IGN. I think it dropped yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it is ambiguous, ambitious <laughs> from the outside. Frankly, I have no idea what's going on, but I've always kind of felt that way about Final Fantasy trailers from the outside. You were introduced to many different nations, and a big, big exciting point around this is, of course, that's coming out relatively soon, which is summer 2023, and it is being produced by Yoshi P, who has taken over the Final Fantasy XIV product and made it into the darling that it is. So, as someone in the know, or at least... Uh, played fully through 10 and lots and lots of 14. Or, <laughs> uh, how how did the story trailer land for you, John? I mean, I think probably the same way it landed for you. I think there was a general sense of confusion. This falls very much in, uh, you know, like kind of anime-ish tropes for trailers where it's like, here's a character, he's going to say something. Here's a character, he's going to say something. Here's a character, she's going to say something. Here's a character, we're going to talk about him. They're not saying anything, though. Here's another character. Like, it's just, it kind of goes down that road. Um, it's a it's a case of, I trust, right? You know, kind of going off the back of Konami where it's like, no, you hurt me. Here's the company that hasn't hurt me recently, at least in this one particular department. Let's maybe not branch too far off into Square Enix territory, but like Yoshi P and company haven't haven't hurt me uh, too recently. So I, I feel like what we're looking at is Final Fantasy meets Game of Thrones. Um yeah. Getting that vibe. Uh, may maybe specifically House of the Dragon, because it, it feels very much like political intrigue. Here's your characters, and then you've got icons or summons or primals or whatever you want to call them. Uh, in this case, they're gonna call them icons, it sounds like. And there's your super weapons that make nations, you know, your your big weapons that make our nations better because we got Titan, you know, our nations better because we got Ifrit and stuff like that. And I think there's a cool story to be told with that. You know, the idea of uh, fantasy kingdoms with these crazy summon super weapons and uh, an interesting political story. Like, I think it could be good. Um, the the action combat is still scary to me. I'm still in the era of Final Fantasies where we're taking turns hitting each other with swords and I feel very comfortable. Uh, but as somebody that took a while to uh, really appreciate the combat system in Final Fantasy VII Remake, but then got there and was like, oh, this is actually good. Uh, you know, I am excited to see how it plays. So I, I think overall it's a positive for me for Final Fantasy XVI, but I also don't blame anybody that looks at it and goes, well, that was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an element I like. Like, I really like um, Pacific Rim. For that reason, like, here comes the Russian craft. And they change the music because the Russian it has the best theme song, too. The big old Russian one coming out. Uh, but 
that that idea that each of these nations has their own superhero the yeah. weirdest thing about this trailer is I, I feel the divide between like dragon age inquisition trailer that's constantly talking about how i'm special and then final fantasy 16 trailer that constantly talks about how the world is special and i briefly see in this trailer a moment where you know, i i think i'm kicking ass i think i'm this person uh, I think with, it's with a sword and health bars and stuff but I don't really know what role I'm going to have in this or why all these nations that might be angry with each other. Like, and, you know, it breaks down to like the classic kind of, the, you know, the war nation, the cult nation, the, you know, that goes across the board. You got the big castle, you know, more like Germanic kind of nation. It, it has all the pieces to be a functioning, interesting world, but I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in it and how I'm going to play a part. Yeah. Are you going to have an influence on it? Or are you just kind of going to be the pawn getting bounced from kingdom to kingdom and be like, you know, I woke up this morning and it turns out all this warmonger and we're doing, I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't be a part of it. And they're like, well, let me come over here. You can help us. And then, oh, there's a trap door. And I learned of a secret dealing. It turns out they're just as bad. Better go to the third nation and see if they're okay. I, I don't know. I don't know what your role is going to be, but uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to influence it. Like, are we are we bouncing around or do we get some agency or is this just a cool story being told to us? Um, but it could be it could be compelling to see, you know, maybe there's going to be get this. What if there was another nation that unified the nations? Whoa, I crazy. What if it, what if that was you? What if you were like born? <laughs> And were special and had like wow. the blood of the something that made you <laughs> important. <laughs> and from the outside, Final Fantasy 15 looked like a hot mess. Yeah. And I really like the kind of open world, even the car kind of stuff that was kind of interesting looking at it. But that entire like back chapter, which I think you even had to watch a movie to understand, where I guess you became king, was just entirely uh lost on me yeah i haven't i haven't played 15 it's one of the few final fantasies i've put zero time into um i always liked the idea of a like weird hybrid world of like fantasy and like modern and i kind of like the idea of the road trip story i mean not to get too much final fantasy 14 talk but i thought that was one of the stronger parts of uh heaven's ward was when it felt like a, a little road trip uh, to go see dragons that felt cool uh, so I, I conceptually i like a lot there but i have also heard that that at the end it kind of goes off the rails it kind of loses what it was supposed to be and it becomes something else uh this looks brutal though there's some yeah. like big bloody death in this trailer and uh i'm also a little bit excited to see you know see the game just go for it yeah, you even kind of, what was this, the scale infection or something from Game of Thrones? There's a lot of Game of Thrones you could like straight up, you could tell me this is a Game of Thrones game, trade out the audio, and then cut off the back half when they all turn into monsters and stuff. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah. like quite a bit of it is very like, ah, okay, this is the world we find ourselves in. It is interesting because Final Fantasy has done that too. Like a lot of games grabbed onto Final Fantasy, but I feel like in particular Yoshi P's project has said, we're going to keep it good Game of Thrones. We're going to keep it the, the good parts. And all the other ones went, yeah, but what if we kept making it bad? Like, what if we went into the bad parts of Game of Thrones? <laughs> like, no, 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 that's not the lesson you were supposed to learn from this. It wasn't about popularity. It was about focus. Yeah, I think that's what I want to see. I And I, I'm happy to see the, you know, we've seen in some of the other trailers, like, just gigantic icons punching each other. And I'm kind of all for it. Like, I kind of want to see that scale and that spectacle. And I, I don't know. I think it's compelling. I think it's extremely compelling. Who knows how it'll turn out, but uh, I'm very excited for it. I'm going to steal my parents' PlayStation 5 to play it. That's what I'm Oh, gonna that's do. right. Did did they really get one just for like DVDs? Or are they actually like... <laughs> they, they think they need a game console. And I don't know why. And they don't play it. And every time I'm over there, I just see I just see it and a layer of dust on it. And I just, in my head, every time I'm like, oh, I'm going to save you one day. <laughs> I'm going to save you and I'm going to oh. bring you home. And we're going to play 
God of War and we're going to play uh, Final Fantasy and it's going to be good. You go on Wish, like get yourself a, a PlayStation 4 by look and, you know, do a... Oh, that's a Do an Indiana idea. Jones swap out. Yeah, sit there and hmm, yeah, really. my chin. Mm-hmm. Weigh, weigh the PlayStation 5 versus looking <laughs> Pour at some it. some sand in the top holes, you know, make sure it's got some weight to it. If they're not yet, my parents did the same thing back in uh, PlayStation 3. Granted, those weren't as scarce. But honestly, because the consoles at that time, I'm not sure about PlayStation 5, were selling at a loss in order to sell games. You could get a Blu-ray player cheaper by buying a PlayStation than you could buying a Blu-ray player. Yeah. So is that what my happened? mom was? My mom was all plugged into that. My mom was one of those moms. She she knew I wanted a PlayStation Two. She's like, "We're gonna make sure you get one," because I I think I had a reserve at GameStop. But it was like I was right between the second wave and the first wave. So it was, well, you can get it on the day it comes out if you show up and if somebody cancels their order. And so it was still kind of iffy. And my mom went into full like, my son will have a PlayStation 2 mode. And she was going to stores and she was making calls. And the day I got home from school, the day the PlayStation came out, uh, I had gotten mine from my GameStop reserve. I came home and there were four PlayStation 2s in the house. Why? What? And she was like, yeah, we went and got them. And I was like, well, what are we going to do with them? She's like, we're going to sell them. <laughs> and she turned into that. <laughs> and she turned into that mom. <laughs> and I was like, mom, don't you feel bad? Because <laughs> so, like, even as a kid, I was like, yeah mom don't you feel bad like and we used to joke that like little timmy wasn't gonna get his playstation this year and she goes no he's gonna get his playstation his mom's just gonna pay more for it yeah (laughs) and so i was like okay all right mom it's a bit more industrious back then like nowadays it's nefarious it's a it's a online machine that can't be stopped but the idea of your mom and what would that be like 2003 or something playstation 2 maybe even earlier like being industrious being uh entrepreneurial it's kind of bad how she did it yeah because she's just one person and nobody else helped her she yeah. just went around and did it but my mom has strange powers like i wouldn't be surprised if i found out <laughs> she was like a super villain i once saw her in a line that she found obnoxious at sea world and she convinced the line to move out of the way to go look for a different line that was moving faster that oh, didn't exist damn and it sounds crazy, but I have a friend who remembers this the exact same way who was with me, and he brings it up every now and then and goes, how did she do this? Yeah. How did she do that? Because she just went, she left us in the line, walked around the other side of the, the kiosk where they're selling tickets, and came back and went, we need to move. There's actually, they're just opening lines on this side. We can get right in. And the people in front of us slipped out of line and disappeared around back, and we walked right up to the front. And there was nobody over there. There's nobody wow. opening up lines back there. She just, I, I was, I was like, you, I just saw the force get used. Like this was incredible. Is this going to be a PlayStation exclusive? I assume so, right? Like Final it Fantasy. It kind of has to be. Yeah. Like there's been those rumors of Sony buying out Square, and you know, it lives there. Uh, you know, I've always thought it was a little suspicious that Yoshi P seems to really say like, oh, yeah, we'd love to have 14 on the Xbox. And then it just and Microsoft's like, yeah, we'd love to have it. And it's like, well, if he wants to do it and you want it, why are we sitting here? What's happening? And so I always assume there's greater business dealings going on. And I think it's going to be Sony only. Hmm. For a while, at the very least. Sony's really getting into this putting it on PC business. Uh, I like it. I I enjoy it. It's it's working out well for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we go any further, we're going to start talking about that Final Fantasy XIV business. I want to thank everybody over on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Garen Kyle. But you should use the more formal link, supportourbromance.com. You could also change it up a little bit and head over to buyourbromance.com for merch, should you choose. But this show is produced by our lovely, lovely patrons. We thank you so much for supporting this show. If this advertisement I'm doing is sitting in the middle of the show and you're like, hey, well, well, I I don't really want to hear this. Well, go over to supportourbromance.com and I will have deleted this from your special RSS file. If there's any other ads, they'll be gone. You will not hear this at all. Support our bromance.com 
is the most thorough, direct way to support the show. And we appreciate y'all's support. So here we are at the Final Fantasy XIV part of our show. It's time to reveal Jean's secret power he's had in the background. So I, I kind of want to tie it a little bit to our other conversation we're having about Final Fantasy XVI, but let let's let's get into you a little bit. This will be kind of our interview portion of the All show. Right. All right. So when did you get in to Final Fantasy XIV? I've had a couple false starts with it. Uh, I think the first time I was tr I tried to get into 14. Well, actually, I bought it when it first came out. I bought the original 1.0 oh, release wow. and I booted it up. And I think somebody had told me it's like, it's very good. <laughs> I booted <laughs> it up and went, nope, I think maybe I had a minute of playtime, if mm. that. And went, no. Nah, not doing it. Bye. Um, and then I think when A Realm Reborn hit, I think possibly the same person or uh, it's been long enough. I don't remember. But somebody said. Seriously, it's good. They've genuinely made the game really good. <laughs> and I was like, OK, we'll see. And I booted it up and I had a similar experience. I was like, OK, I'm in Gridania running around. We're hearing that song over and over again. Like, I'm just talking to people. There's no combat. Like, my my head was in full World of Warcraft mode, right? It's like, why am I not out there fighting things, man? Yeah. I got anger, and I got to take it out on woodland creatures, three to five of them a piece. And I I was like, this is this isn't going great. Um, and I stopped again, and I think I gave it another try. Uh probably in Stormblood, late Stormblood. Okay, so and pretty big jump for you then. Yeah, I ignored it for a long time. And then, you know, like most MMOs, it waxes and wanes. And I was at a point where I was like, well, I want to play an MMO. I don't really want to play um, World of Warcraft. Let's try Final Fantasy. Let's check back in. And I just still couldn't get into it. And I think it was probably like a series of tries. And so my first real try where I was like, I'm going to play this game. I've tried so many times. Um, I've had to buy the game like three times because the account setup system is such a nightmare. I can't remember and get into any of these other accounts. So I'm going to get in and I'm going to play it for sure. Uh, and I did. And I made it through A Realm Reborn. And I made it to the post A Realm Reborn content, which nobody told me about. So, you know, I wasn't <laughs> streaming it. Yeah. You guys have had a benefit that I wish I had. I All I had was a few people I knew on Twitter who had played the game that would chime in if I if I publicly complained about something. <laughs> and I I had somebody tell me, like, look, A Realm Reborn is slow. But if you get through that, it gets awesome. And I was like, awesome. So I got through Realm Reborn and I checked in with them and I said, all right, I, I think I finished a Realm Reborn. I saw credits and the, and they were like, all right, you just have like a hundred more quests to go and then it gets good. And I went, what did this, where did this hundred quests come from? What are you talking about? A hundred quests more to go and then it gets good. You told me it got good at the end of this. Where is this coming from? And uh, they're like, no, 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 no. You just gotta get through the the the. I didn't even know it as the patch content. It was just like some amount of quests. I don't remember what the number was at the time. It was before they pruned it, and I was like, I can't do this. And I I already had such bad like going into a dungeon anxiety, and a lot of that content was like go into a dungeon and do. And it was just so many like. Now go do this dungeon again. And I was like, no, I can't. I'm done. And I, I stopped and I, I bounced off of that. And so then they announced they pruned that content, right? Like right. they cut it back. Those hundred quests were now 90 quests, <laughs> whatever, whatever it became. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'll, I'll try it. I'll I'll give it a go. I'll try it earnestly again. And I got bored during a realm reborn again. And I was struggling. And I bought 
uh no i made it through a realm reborn i was in the the new pruned down 90 quests or whatever it was it's 66 chat says it's, however many quests it is it still feels like a lot i was in it and i i was like is this going anywhere what is this doing i don't think i can do this again and i bought a skip i bought a, a skip to heaven's ward while i was in the patch content and I didn't just immediately run off to Heaven's Ward. I did my due diligence. I went and I checked out the inn and I watched all the cutscenes for what I missed. And at first I was like, I didn't miss a goddamn thing. <laughs> like, this, this is fine. This none of this is bad. Like, and then all of a sudden I started getting to some like really interesting stuff. I'm like, who's this Moon Brita character? She's interesting. And then I was like, oh, we got some intrigue going on here. All right, all right, political stuff, political stuff. Well, hold on. What? What? What's this? We're all gonna have a meal and a celebration. Is that how we're gonna end? And then I watched the the ending to, um, you know, a realm reborn with the whole feast and and you know the death of the sultana sort of, and all of that. And I was like, holy shit, this is good. This is really good. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, you know, you call me the MS curator and I feel like I've done an okay enough job. Back then, I didn't because you and me tried it at a similar time, Kyle. I was kind of really? getting into it and you kind of hmm. you kind of dipped your toe in around a similar point too um, for the first time. For like, this isn't where it would stick, but you were like, is there something to this? And I think this was, you talk about it, like the the like time you were in gradania and you ran around you were like oh this is boring <laughs> and then you got out gradania um, man it's, it's gradania's fault <laughs> it is it's all about gradania and i i was like hold on i thought maybe i could recapture you so i was going into our our discord or at the time it would have been slack and i was like guys you won't believe what happens at the end of a realm reborn like it's crazy arms are getting cut off People are dying. People are getting arrested. <laughs> like immediately just throwing all the spoilers in the world out there because I was like, this is this is amazing. This is so good. And uh, after that, I was pretty much hooked. Like after that moment, I was like, OK, I I'm into this. I see what they're doing. I played through Heaven's Ward. I thought Heaven's Ward was incredible. Um, and. I, I was like, oh, oh, I get it. And I got to Stormblood. And it's been fun watching your journey because I had the exact same issue that Garrett did at the exact same spot. Ruby C meeting the dumb pirates. Mm -hmm. And I, I went back and found the tweet. I think I even sent you the tweet when you guys got to this point where I got on Twitter and I was just like, People told me Final Fantasy XIV gets good after A Realm Reborn, but I'm in Stormblood, and what's going on? <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what are we doing here right now? And people, once again, chimed in. You just gotta get this slow part. You just gotta go a little further, and it'll get better. Um, but I didn't have quite the same, like, I don't want to say this because it sounds like I'm taking credit for it, but it's the word that pops into my head. I didn't have quite the same curated experience that you guys are having. Sure. There were occasional check-ins online. I didn't have people going, this is important. And I went in with wow brain and wow brain was like, who cares? Like put Netflix on while you're playing this game, like watch something, do whatever you want. Don't, you don't have to sit there and think about, Oh, Okay. The, the crew from the cutscene showed up and called themselves the Warriors of Darkness for a side quest during the patch content. This will never be important again. Sure, why not? So uh, I might as well watch. I might as well watch Netflix while I interact with them. Um, and that's what I did. And so I, by the time I got through that playthrough, I beat uh, Shadowbringers, and. It was an incredible experience by the end, but it was an incredible experience that had a not very great start and had a couple of really weird hiccups in the way. And I got to the end and I went, I didn't appreciate what they were doing. 
And now I'm at the end of this journey and I really appreciate it. What if I played through all of Final Fantasy XIV one more time? And I made a new character, and that is exactly what I did. And so I can say that was probably the moment in earnest I sat down and played the game the way it was supposed to be played. Like, and it was almost immediate post Shadowbringers. Like, I did a couple raids and went, hell yeah, these are great. These are fun. Why was I so worried about doing these? Look at how I'm gearing up. And I geared up my samurai and I was like, I look cool. And then I went, all right, it's, it's time. And I restarted it and I played through all of, all of Final Fantasy XIV again. Uh, and that's the character and that's where I'm at now. Okay, so I remember adjacent to this. So you guys had moved core podcast from a Heroes of the Storm show around that like 2018 announcement. I think it was early 2019 for you guys. Yeah. And then you start talking about Shadowbringers like late 2019 and you're just you're talking to yourself on the court you'd be like you guys yeah. you guys listen yeah. and you know and, and and scott and bo are both being like ah you know bfa it's not really doing it for me and you're like you guys listen listen <laughs> to me so but your experience is how i go through most games when i was growing up i was a rental kid like the majority of yeah. games i experienced was through rentals and so i had no time for side quests it was just main quest all the way. Everything was bull until it proved otherwise. And that's how I played through Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Like, I'd get into this game and be like, yeah, yeah, you don't matter. Yeah, you don't matter. Uh-huh, uh, whatever, whatever. And I'd miss tons of party members. I don't even think I got um, Claire or whatever her name was in Dragon Age Origins, the, the, the priest girl who becomes your archer. Because anyone yeah. who walked up to me and was like, do you require help? I'm like, no, I ain't got time for you. I've got a set crew. Alistair's here. No problem. Out of my way. And I think that's how I would have gone through Final Fantasy without other people talking to me along the way, because you can always just replay it. You can always just start it up again. You don't realize when you're, you know, 300 hours in and you still haven't beaten the game. That that's a pretty big <laughs> undertaking. Yeah. So it's almost it's almost better to get into that, you know, mindset of like, now nah, respect it as you go, like take your time, walk away, you know. I, 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 yeah, the chat saying I would tell the science staff off. I, I probably did in my head. Like, certainly I showed up and some white haired guy walks out and he's like, oh, it's you. And the voice acting's kind of off. And I'm just like, I, I don't care. And then eventually I get to, you know, meeting the princess and then uh, you've seen her before. I'm like, no, I haven't. Screw that. Like, that's a, that's a dumb <laughs> idea. There's nobody who looked like this anywhere in my game. So, yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm conflicted about where to ask next because I've got so many questions as to how you feel you talk about the game. So let, let, let's let's go personal for me. So for the way I tell it is that you eventually told me it's kind of like Dragon Age, treat it like an RPG rather than an MMO. Right. Is that how you remember it? Would you explain the game differently to people nowadays? It's really hard to say. I mean, definitely... <sighs> The inclination is there, and I think a lot of people did a disservice to the game because it, it certainly got popular at a time where WoW was having some issues. Um, I think it became really easy to shorthand and go, this game's a lot like WoW. And I think, testament to my experiences with it, going in with WoW Brain is a real negative experience for that video game. You do not go in with the right mindset if you go in with a World of Warcraft mindset going into the game. It's similar in structure and design, and there's there's it's gonna feel you know familiar, but I don't think you're gonna have the right experience. So I think telling people treat it like you're playing a single R single player RPG is the best idea because you don't want to give up the ghost too early. And people aren't going to believe you when they're sitting there. And this was this was you too, complaining about Alphano and how insufferable he is <laughs> and how you cannot stand hearing him. You don't want to give up the ghost too much and be like, look, you're going to care about this guy a lot. He's not going to change. His, he's not going to change a ton. He's going to change. He's going to evolve. But you're going to care about this guy. But you can't really say why and you can't really make somebody believe it. The best you can do is just kind of say, look, you have to trust that they're going somewhere with this, 
which again is hard for people to believe because we've been burned so many times you know uh, in and not just in mmos but in any story where it's multi-parts like we we've just had characters change on a dime at the end and and stuff done for dramatic effect with no real payoff to it it's hard to tell somebody look this is important when they introduce you to a character like you should keep them in the back of your mind like you should you should actually pay attention to the things they say you'll be rewarded for it um and so as a result it's hard to sell that and i still think to this day the best way you can sell that is to say take it slow understand this is a long form story very long form and play it like a role playing game don't play it like an mmo the mmo will come you'll find it eventually but you got to get through this first yeah in the end it's more like a functional mass effect 3 like what they wanted mass effect 3 to be with the multiplayer you beat the story yeah. and then you hang out and enjoy the multiplayer yeah. Yeah, then we all we all get together and we all go, man, what a crazy experience I have. If we talked about it, it'd probably be very similar. But now we're all going to be here and we're all going to do group activities. So for those who aren't aware, the MS curator position that John has is, is basically kind of a, a text chat we both have as you help me kind of lead through where our stopping points might be in an expansion. So for yeah. Stormblood there, you, you gave me a little warning about Ruby C and how we might want to kind of really plow through that and not digest that like piece, <laughs> yep. piece by piece, like make a whole video being like ruby sea pirates mm, let's analyze them no probably not the right idea just keep going keep and then eventually you'll get to beats you might want to talk about so uh that there hey you know at the end of your stream there might be a dungeon that'd be a great place to stop or uh there's these there's it's kind of divided into three chapters and i'll let you know when you reach chapter one and that sort of business yeah what uh, watching us go through a story that you experienced twice what has that experience been like it's been fun i watch people reacting to final fantasy stuff all the time not even just you guys like you guys this has been fun because you're friends i can chat with you about it um it's not just a parasocial relationship of me watching a streamer go through and be like they saw the thing um i can actually have conversations with you guys and be like oh what'd you think of this would you you know how are you feeling about this you know we can laugh about you know your your alpha no thoughts early in the days when i would just be like just hang on kyle he'll get there <laughs> <laughs> he'll be he'll be okay um because you really didn't like alpha no at the beginning no I feel like it's been in a couple videos, but I know that was like early Twitch streaming stuff and, and all of that when you would when you were really like down on him. Um, so that stuff is just really fun for me. Um, I, I think part of the reason Final Fantasy is so popular to watch people do playthroughs is everybody likes to see people see the story pay off. Like that's that's kind of the thing. Like it's you don't really go to Final Fantasy for shock moments. Like you don't really show up and be like, oh man, their their jaw's gonna hit the floor. There's a few of them, you know, like there's some welcome to Shadowbringers moments where you're like, yeah, I wanna see what they think when this hits the floor, because they haven't seen anything like this in this game yet. But ultimately, like it's it's more to just see the story pay off and like kind of hit people in interesting ways as it evolves and as they evolve over time. And uh, it's fun. It's like it's a good time to watch you guys do it. So you so you had your initial difficulties, bought the boost, then went back and played through it again. Yeah. Was that your first Final Fantasy game or did you play lots of Final Fantasy game growing up? I, I had dabbled in pretty much all of them. Like it's kind of the series that it's like I definitely love and never actually seriously played very many of them. Um you know I, it's like oh, i played eight i got to disc two i played seven i got through disc one <laughs> like you know little bits here and there of all of them uh, but never a deep dive never a real passion for the series and it was 14 and playing through the game uh multiple times and taking in that world that made me go well let's give the full series an appreciation and that's what led me down that path are you the do you cancel your subscription type? Do you, you know, wander off? Do you try to play every day? Like what, what's kind of your style of the game when you are current? I did play every day for a while. So we I mentioned this to you before we started. 
uh, because I, I haven't played recently. Uh, I am still subbed <laughs> because I, in theory, I will play. But I had to do a, I had to do a wipe on my computer, and uh, Final Fantasy XIV turns out there are two settings you have to back up if you want to do a restoration. You have to back up your system settings, but you also need to back up your character settings. And I only did one of those two. And so when I log in, my UI is wrong and nothing is hotkeyed the way it's supposed to be. And I have not found the willpower to fix it yet. And so I log in and I go, oh my gosh. Got so much work I got to do before I can play the video game. Brutal. I'll do it tomorrow. But you know what it doesn't prevent me from? It doesn't prevent me from checking to see if I won the lottery and the golden saucer every week. <laughs> you could still walk in there. Yeah. So okay. I can tell you, yes, I play every week to see if I've won a lot of money <laughs> in the gold saucer. Um, and then one day I'm going to fix my UI and stuff and then and then we'll be good. So you've done the most recent like story chapter thing, like uh, what was that three months ago or so, when all that yeah. came out? Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's just so still looking strong on the other side and all that. It's like, looking really good. Awesome. Like I, I knew that their goal. Now everybody gets to see me work as the MS curator. Yeah. yeah How, well, how's that. John gonna talk about uh -huh. current stuff to Kyle? How, what's he gonna say? Um, you know, I think there were two goals with Endwalker, right? Like you wanted to see a payoff to the end of the story. Like if you're going to bill right. it as the end of the current story, you want to see it pay off and feel good and not feel like we did it. But there's another threat that right, the one piece in the land. I'm yeah, not going to watch like... One Piece until it's over. Like the whole idea of Endwalker, like to me from the outside was like, oh, they're going to finish something. Now let's, let, yeah. let's see what this is. Let's see what this is about. And so there knowing that they want to end it and then they want to start something new. How much is that new beginning going to feel like a new beginning? And I think a logical fear to have going into that is, well, are we going to do ARR again? <laughs> are we going to do, <laughs> is this going to be 300 hours of world building so that we can start a new story? That's going to be interesting. And, um, I, I'm happy to say, no, they are keeping their pace and they are keeping their, we love this word, cadence as far as like yeah. story beats and like intrigue. That's all still going very strong while still not discrediting that Endwalker was the end. We did get a question uh, in our Discord of from Luke saying, how difficult is that times? Uh, to not blurt out cool spoiler stuff to the guys. I think we just heard that. We just got an example of a... Yeah, of it's that, hard. That structured conversation. You just suddenly, It's tricky. Oh, it was, it was I well spend done. a lot of time thinking about it. Like, like when I told you that you were going to have to make a choice coming up, I was like, well, they didn't get far enough to know what the choice is. And I just sent you a message and I was like, we'll just call it... Do you want to take the red pill or the blue pill? We'll just go with the matrix on this. And that's all I told you. Yeah. And, and then I said, we'll just talk about it in terms of pills. And I said, like, there's going to be one choice red pill, and it's going to mean this to the stream. And there's going to be one choice blue pill, and it's going to mean this to the stream. And here's what they're going to tell you. And then ultimately, my advice was you only get to play through this game once unless you do what I did and play it twice. But, uh, you know, you guys pick what you want to do. That's the that's the smartest thing. But then I did also tell you, if you stop in the middle of the red pill choice, the chat is going to have a fit. So whatever you do, <laughs> yeah. whatever you do, don't stop in the middle of the red choice. Get to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Don't end that stream a, a little early, you know, three hours and you're like, oh, you know, I feel a little tired here. Let's uh, <laughs> yeah. let's wrap this up. Well, and then I heard that it, people flat out just ruined it for you. They still told you exactly <laughs> what those choices were going to be. But I try to be very careful. Yes. I try to I try to hide it to where when he gets to it, he'll it's not so obscure that it'll go. What the hell did John call this pills? But, you know, at least it's obscure enough at the time we're talking that you'll go. All right. Something's going on. I can figure this out. So then so you bought the game in 1.0. 
and dabbled about and kept kind of checking in on it. And I know you were doing Azeroth Roundtable, you know, the World of Warcraft show with Ben and all that sort of business. Talk with Scott regularly, Core, uh, Bo Schwartz, in and out, in and out. How did you absorb the Yoshi P presence from the outside? Like, because with the stream, of course, we've heard tons of factoids, tons, tons yeah. of talk about his vision. And in fact, that's something I really respond to. I really respond to, you know, Chris Metzen's and Bed Broads and kind of these like a figurehead that you can look at and someone say, give us an answer. And with Yoshi P, the game has that director, you know, producer type that you feel like you can trust. But your experience would have been more organic, not on stream, absorbing it by yourself. Yeah, I didn't know who Yoshi P was for a really long time. And so it was really weird because the, uh, the memes kind of built up away from me. And like I watched the no clip documentary. Um, I, I think I watched it well before I actually I mean, it would have it might have been what inspired me to do the Stormblood playthrough uh, at that time or try it. Um, so I saw the interview with them. And when I heard Yoshi P later, I was like, oh, I think that was that guy in the documentary that I saw. Like I was very disconnected from it. And so it was one of those things where it kind of it came to me. Um, because again, I didn't have a lot of people to talk to about the game. So I didn't really start paying attention to Yoshi P until honestly, for me, my, probably my first live letter, um, when I was interested enough in the game to tune into a live letter and go, Oh, what's next for the game and saw him. And then I became aware that he had become kind of this very popular and important figurehead in the community. Um, which by that point, like I was immediately like, oh, oh guys, be careful. <laughs> We've been hurt before. Be careful now. Don't do this. Don't put people on pedestals. Um, I still get a little bit like that, but I mean, you can't deny the charm of. I mean, I love live letters. I don't I'm sure you've gotten to see enough because I know people give you spoiler free versions of them to see. You've seen them hold pieces of paper up to the screen, right? Yeah, it's it's adorable. Yeah. So you uh, you there's something so charming and endearing about that, that it's not some big production value of yeah, we got to see this. We got to see this. It is just flat out like we printed this off earlier and we're going to hold it up to the screen and show it to you. And I was just like, man, this is so endearing. This is so like there's a, there's a humility to it that it's not hard to see where the adoration comes from. That makes perfect sense. Also, they, their streams work, which is one of the weirdest things about Blizzard. Just, they always have stream issues. Yeah, their streams work, and yet it feels like it's held together by duct tape. Yeah. They're like, we're going to cut to this. Every now and then you'll run into weird tech issues. Um, or I think it was one of the ones for like Endwalker showing off like new abilities. Like he went to demo something and he like either didn't work or it wasn't in the build that they ended up doing. He was like, oh, uh, it's not in this build, but let me tell you, it's going to be real neat. <laughs> like, it was just, <laughs> it was, it's very fun to see. So uh, I, I, I love that stuff. I love, you know, I like self-deprecating humor and it feels like they don't, they don't try to pretend that they're rock stars, which is nice. No, in particular, the, the although they are rock stars, like sure. they do actually, they do do that. But they, they have you know that status, I mean. certainly. And there's a lot <laughs> yes. of people that look to them. Uh, the big live letter I remember uh, really getting into was the one all about the add-ons, because that was kind of the one I was researching, you know, dissecting the timeline for add-ons and the whole conversation around that. And I just really liked the forwardness of which they had that conversation with the, just don't show me, you know? Yeah. You can have whatever you want on your computer. You can't walk around the streets showing it off to people. Just don't show anybody else if that's what you want to do. <laughs> it's crazy how hard it is for people to follow that too, right? Like it's, you would think that like, hey guys, you know, do what you want. We can't tell is a clear enough instruction. And then people still stumble into it. And you're like, guys, we, <laughs> what are you doing? They told you, they told you exactly. They gave you. It, like they did that thing where someone like sets a key next to the jail cell, like 
obviously within reach and are just like, oh, well, I'm going to go take a nap. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I just picture like the people that get caught using uh, add ons and stuff like that. That guy wakes up the next day and like, oh, I hope there's no prison break. And the guy's just still sitting in his cell with the key there. I was like, what are you do? What are you doing? <laughs> was I was I too subtle? What happened here? Do you think that uh, that respect for Yoshi P is translating to something like Final Fantasy 16 for you? I think so. I, I think that there's definitely like, you know, you know that he's you've seen the body of work, right? And um, at the very least, you've seen the the honesty of it. And I think that's something we don't get a lot in video gaming. We don't, and understandably so. I don't fault any developer out there for wanting to be secretive because, you know, we know how gamers can be. It's like, you know, oh, you, you made the puddles different in Spider-Man. You should die. You know, like the overreaction to things is our bread and butter. So I don't necessarily fault developers for not wanting to overshare or uh, things like that. But when you see a company being, you know, coming out and being like, yeah, hey, the way we do transmog isn't ideal um, and we need to fix that. But here's the system issues we have and we haven't figured out a way around it. And I don't know when we're going to figure it out, but here's the plan and here's when you'll hear about it. You're not used to that kind of upfront, honest answer. Usually you just get the like wink of the nod, like, I don't know, seems pretty difficult to me. You're like, it's like, what does that mean? What should I read into that? Like, were you being sarcastic? Were you being genuine? And I think seeing somebody who's going to earnestly come forward and tell you how things are going, you, you believe them. It's not a guarantee you're going to like their game, but you're going to know that the right heart and soul went into it to at least give it a shot, give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean you need to go pre-order it, but it means if it gets good reviews, you know, you should certainly consider it. You should at least go steal your parents' PlayStation for it. <laughs> Did we have that conversation during the show? Was that during uh, the I, break? <laughs> I don't know. So that's a callback <laughs> to something that people might not know. Uh, so without a doubt, the biggest question we got from many, many different sources is how do I get my friends to play Final Fantasy XIV? I want them to play yeah. my significant other, whoever it may be. And Mythos Midnight had a way of putting it, which I think gives it a bit more purpose, which is what kind of advice do you feel is appropriate to give versus letting someone discover it organically? Yeah, that's... <laughs> I mean, this is the real trick. I mean, this is part of why I think the game gradually grows in number is because I think I don't think it's easily sold. I don't think it I don't think there's one be all end all way to tell somebody get into this game. I do think the community does a disservice um, saying that A Realm Reborn is boring. We've all played it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pretend that it's something that it isn't, but I don't think it is as bad as all the warnings tend to make it. And I think the warnings can sometimes genuinely scare people off. I think that you do need to, I think you need to know your audience though, when you're selling this game, you know, I don't think so. I, you know, I do the podcast with Bo and Scott. I wouldn't try to sell Scott on Final Fantasy XIV. I don't think he has the temperament for it. Um, Scott likes to play too many games, too big of a variety of games. He likes to jump from one thing to another. He doesn't like a lot of reading. Like, this isn't necessarily a game for him unless he gets in the right mindset. And if he ever came to me and was like, you know, I just want to sit down and just kind of chill and play a relaxed game like then that's your moment that's when you try to sell final fantasy 14 go like all right well what if you did mmo stuff and just got told a story that's when you jump on that because i don't think that the game is right for everyone at every particular moment it wasn't even for me like i had a bunch of false starts for the game now it's one of my favorite games ever made but there were certainly times in my life where I don't think there's a way you could have properly sold me on this game. I don't think, 
I felt lied to when people were like, ARR is boring, but then it gets good. And then I got to the patch content and went, it's still not good. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, and then plus it's, got it's, it's a level stop. That really got me. Like the fact that yeah. your just XP dries up. And you're thinking, yeah, yourself, what? It's still in that wow brain, but you're still going, well, what? Why am I doing all of this? What, what, what purpose? I, I'm not gaining power. I'm not gaining energy or currency. Where is this leading? Yeah, I think you gotta. I think you gotta know your audience. Like my wife wants to play it, and the closest she got to playing it, she doesn't have an easy way to play it because her computer died right around the time she got interested. But like, <laughs> I told her we could get married in the game. And uh, she was very excited about that. <laughs> um, for people that uh, don't know, I don't know why you would know this, but uh, we got married during the, the pandemic. We did not have a wedding. So the idea of a bunch of friends being able to come together and do something like that was really appealing to her. And then I was like, hey, I got an extra of this cute little otter pet that you liked. I will hold on to it for you. Those two things. She was like, man, I want to play Final Fantasy <laughs> 14 so bad. <laughs> That's not universal. Don't go try that with uh, like, I just, you know, don't go to your significant other immediately go like, want to get married in a video game? Like no guarantees they're going to think that's a good idea. But I think you just got to know, you got to know your audience. You got to know who you're, who you're selling it to. And the game's big. There's a lot of things to do in this game. You don't have to necessarily just talk up the story. Like it's good, but that's not going to sell everybody. Like you can't drop a giant book in front of someone and go, it's good. Read it. Like it doesn't work. It doesn't work on anybody. Nobody has ever been sold that like, oh, geez, you know what I was missing in my life? A 400 page story. You're right. I should get right on this right now. Um, it's uh, it's unique and it's hard. It's hard to sell people. It turns out it was kind of easy to sell Kyle. But even you, like, you had a false start in it, too. Oh, yeah. So uh, I, I think that there's, I think you got to pick your moment. Yeah, mine was, uh, and I'm sure you know, a lot of people would, some people would take great offense to why I started enjoying it, but I need a dad game. I need a game that I could fall asleep in my <laughs> yep. chair at night, that I wasn't going to be attacked if I fell asleep in front of a quest giver, that I wasn't going to enter PvP randomly, no one was going to duel me. I just need something to read before bed. And I fell asleep in this very chair often <laughs> playing around <laughs> born. It, it didn't hurt. You know, I'd log out the, yeah. the cut scene or whatever would restart when I got back in, you know, just, you know, alt, uh, control, alt, delete out of that. Just go to bed as fast as possible. Ride that sleep in. And so for me, it worked. And then I kind of got caught up in the co-op net co-opness of it and the, the fun to be had. And that, that's perhaps the weirdest part about it is the co-op game that waits for you later on which is highly functional which yeah. is very uh well crafted but there's definitely more action to be had in other mmos yeah it's it's a game that if you especially if you're picking up the side quests which you shouldn't do and that was another reminder you got to tell a lot of people yes. like hey don't do yeah. the side quests but um if you if you're doing side quests and stuff and you're just running you don't even get out of the city until you're like level three or four like they don't even send you out there you can just run around doing errands for people for a crazy amount of time an insane amount of time um and that's fine but i think that i think that so many people come in pre-programmed about how to play something that they don't recognize that it's a game that's giving them options on how to play something. And it's hard to like put people in a world and go, no, you have options to do things right now. You just don't realize it because they don't know. And so people go, I don't know, I guess I got to do, I got to pick up all these quests. And, you know, by the time they've delivered their 14th letter to somebody, they're like, I don't think I like this. Well, th you shouldn't have played that way, you know, and that's something that, if you're left to your own devices, how's somebody going to stop you? How's somebody going to tell you not to do that? And I think that's where the streaming of the content and having people that can walk you through it, it really benefits. Hmm. I find myself very often just logging in to learn how to craft or maintain my inventory. Like there's all these other side projects like Triple Triad, the card game inside of it. 
where mm -hmm. I just full break from the MSQ and go, well, but, and this was before I was streaming too, which is quite a bit more structured. But I was just all going to be like, you know, I don't really feel like reading tonight. I might go do something else. And that particularly that wow brain says, don't bother. Until you're max level, there is no reason to touch anything because it's going to be obsolete. It's going to get bad rewards. It might even like end in a glitch or something along those lines. Not, not fully, but you know, we've heard about this time walking thing they're doing over yeah. there where you will be like mid story and it's like everybody out that next expansion <laughs> you just kind of fly yeah. out of there suddenly Wait, i i was watching that you I, hit max was... level out of the dungeon yep, everyone Go. out there are some uh, other questions for you that you may be able to shine light on but of, of course you know feel free to uh spoiler alert yourself and we'll stay quiet for me <laughs> okay uh, all right what is your favorite trial in the game I yeah, I definitely can't share okay. my favorite trial. Okay. Right. Hundred percent cannot. There's no way to even talk around it. Uh, is there is there something you would recommend? So when the when people are sitting down and they're gonna describe, they're gonna give them they're gonna give somebody the stick to the MSQ talk. What would you personally put on the? But you got to check out this. Um. I think the golden saucer is a good recommendation. I, I here's the weird thing about the golden saucer. So I love it. Admittedly, I, I love it. I think there's a very important lesson to learn in Final Fantasy, and I think the golden saucer will teach you this lesson if you give it the opportunity to. Final Fantasy 14 is not your enemy. It's like D and D. The DM is not your enemy. Final Fantasy 14 wants you to go into its world and have fun. When I first went to the Golden Saucer, I, I went there, I went in, and I was like, oh, this seems like a money sink. This seems like a way to just take Gil out of my pocket. The hardworking adventuring man, they're going to take all my Gil. I'm going to be broke just so I can play some dumb mini games. I'm not going to do it. And I, I didn't. I, like, I left immediately. I was like, I'm not falling for this. But if you spend the time there, you very quickly realize... It's almost impossible to lose MGP at the Golden Saucer. It is just a place to play some games and earn a second currency and earn some rewards for it. You don't lose hardly anything. Like you, There's a single buy-in, which you should do, to buy in as many tokens as you can just to get a head start. But you basically win. E even if you go play the mini games where you can lose, you've lost one coin. And then... Even doing a bad job, you'll get five back. It's not there to take your money. Like, it would be the least successful casino in the history of mankind if it was real. Like, and it's a testament to the fact that they're not there to trick you. They're not there trying to take your money away. They're not trying there to, they just want to give you a place to go do fun things. And that's a universal truth in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, all this content is there just to hope you have a good time with it. And if you don't, don't do it. Go do something else. And I think that lesson in the Golden Saucer shifted my perspective on so many things. Like, you know, Palace of the Dead. It's not for everybody. It's a little dry. But it's not messing with you. Like, it just gives you extra stuff. <laughs> like, it's just other stuff you can do. But... We get so focused in this, you know, I don't know if it's like free to play content or what, but we get in our headspace about things like, oh, they're trying to trick me. This is a trick. <laughs> I'm not going to fall for it. They want me to do this Palace of the Dead for some reason, and I don't know what it is, but they're, they're getting something out of me. No, they just want to give you an opportunity to have fun. Well, that's engagement, right? Yeah. It's the, the word we see thrown around a lot recently. In fact, there was a Overwatch interview. Uh, forget the site that did it but essentially they're like so why'd you switch to a battle pass and they're like well we felt engagement was higher like you what you just said that out loud like, that's not the part <laughs> you're supposed to say you're supposed to say that it was more fun more rewarding you're supposed to at least like you know sprinkle something on top and definitely going into the gold saucer i had that kind of fear too it's like oh this is just for like hours they just want me to be in here so some executive can walk in a board and say hey, hey, look at the engagement these players are having so and so even uh, subscribed an extra month just so they could get their ticket back at the end of the great jackpot. 
because we kept on playing until the weekend. We did it. <laughs> we got him, man. The this if, <laughs> uh, Midas asks, "Is there a terrible joke you would like to tell the grinding gear audience?" Well, we... uh, man, I mostly steal the jokes from the grinding gear audience. Like the amount of times <laughs> I've watched your stream and then immediately go to the other room and just go, guys, listen to this. And uh, I'm terrible at retaining jokes. So like I have to I have to tell you guys, you've all really done a service to me uh, in that, you know, kids love to have jokes at the ready and I never have them because I can never remember them. Um, but, uh, I did look up a list of, uh, dad jokes before we started okay. in case I needed it. And Find the one I, one. the one I, <laughs> I like is, uh, hold on. I lost, there it is. Where do pirates get their hooks? The secondhand stores. You know, that's. I was, I was expecting like that's R what... something like Arby's or R yep. Walmart or something. <laughs> that, no, but that, that's good. got a little twist to it. That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> uh, Kristen asks, uh, you've been playing through all the Final Fantasies, one through nine after 14. Can you mm -hmm. speak to the differences of knowing the references versus having them pass you by on your original playthrough? I'm often curious whether a boss, duty, or theme is newer a throwback myself. Uh, this has been a crazy experience to find out how much of this stuff actually existed before 14. You know, you're running around in a game and all of a sudden Shinryu pops up. And you're like, what is this? What is he doing here? Why is this a thing? Um, it's, it's really nuts. Um, <laughs> it's really nuts to see how, uh, how it has impacted 14 uh this kind of history of games and i think that it has given me a better appreciation like in reverse like i obviously i can't go back i can't be the person playing through 14 and going like oh look at all the loving homages to all my favorite games i can't ever go that way but it has really improved things like I'm a sucker for uh, web lists like I'm I'm basically supporting all your things you hate about the Internet because I always click the top 10 things that you didn't know or this. And I've seen a lot of Final Fantasy ranking lists, right, of, of people saying like, oh, we put them in the best order. And one thing that shocks me is how low three is usually on everybody's list. But because three has such like heavy ties to Shadowbringers, like musically with certain themes, like all this stuff, I love Final Fantasy three. It's very high on my list. And I think that it's probably only that way because I did it in this order because I went. I, I went in this direction and, and was able to go from playing Shadowbringers to then playing actual final fantasy three and going oh my gosh it's the crystal tower oh my gosh it's the eternal wind the the song from the trailer <laughs> for shadow bringers like oh my gosh look at all this stuff like this is so amazing and as a result three hit so strongly for me i was like this is one of the best final fantasies ever played why did this never come out in america till now what is this? What's wrong with people? Why do people put it so low on the list? I don't know if that's a case of the game not being appreciated or if that's a case of like, man, Final Fantasy 14 is a strong love letter to some of these other games. What's the conversation here in the chat about three not being three? Is it confusing to do old Final Fantasies? It is. Uh, so here in America, we got Final Fantasy one and that was Final Fantasy one. American Final Fantasy 2 is Final Fantasy 4, and American Final Fantasy 3 is Final Fantasy 6. What? Oh. <laughs> so wait, there, so there is no 4? Or so there, there's ones missing in America? Like, just if you were... Until, yeah, until they went back and did anthology-type collections, um, we only had one, four, six, and then seven on uh, was existed here. 
Why? So uh, they didn't think it would sell well here. They didn't, uh, and also I would anticipate it probably was a pain in the butt to translate. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I guess I can see that. Huh. It's kind of the opposite problem of making the toys before the movie's out. Like they just yeah. straight up said, no, no, no one's going to, no one's going to care. Yeah. So yeah, that's why there's so much fondness here in America for, you know, one, four, six specifically, because uh, those were ours. Those were the ones we got until you went back. And like by that time, by the time they came out, it was a case of going back. You know, you were playing two for the first time on like Game Boy Advance or on PlayStation, unless you did some sort of emulation or something like that. So, you know, for a lot of people, you, you go from playing Final Fantasy VII to being like, hey, you want to play this NES game that came out in Japan years ago? It's like, no, not really. I don't. Um, but there's a lot of really cool stuff in those games. Like Final Fantasy II is easily the most uh, derided one like most people would put that as the lowest mark for the series but even it has like some crazy ambitious goals like it was skyrim before skyrim like you you get better at skills by using them um which you know you think about an nes game doing that and that's kind of crazy but you think about modern games doing it and that's just that's how games work like i jumped a bunch in morrowind so now i'm good at jumping that's kind of how Final Fantasy II was supposed to work. They just didn't do a very good job of it. So uh, it was ahead of its time. It's still not great. How are you playing the games, the old ones? Because I see you move fast or like auto-complete battles sometimes, and that seems appealing in an old game. Yeah, so my best recommendation, and you know, I'm sure you've got a lot of people playing 14, so this is a, probably a good thing. If you want to go back and revisit those, there's a thing called the Pixel Remaster Collection. It's basically one through six. You can buy them piecemeal, you can buy them together. The Pixel Remasters are phenomenal. Uh, it does an amazing job of updating the graphics without thinking they've upgraded the graphics. You look at it and go, this is how it looked. Yeah, this is 100% how it looked. This is how I remember it. And then you go look at old screenshots and you go, oh, they did a lot of work to this. This is this is actually very impressive. So they've walked to that line of like giving you what you remember through nostalgia goggles and like putting it in there. But they've also done some nice modernization. You can speed up battles. Um, you can turn on the auto battler, which is basically, it sounds like it does the fights for you. It, what it really just does is that whatever the last command you gave someone to do, it will continue to do that until you turn off the auto battler. So if you had your whole team attack, they'll just all fast forward through attack, turns the turn-based combat into basically a big skippable thing that you can just fly through. So for it's a great way to experience the games a lot faster and just kind of enjoy the story and the settings. And uh, it all looks and sounds great. The uh, soundtracks have all been redone and are orchestral. So it sounds great, too. And uh, I cannot recommend those enough. They were phenomenal. Um, the real travesty is that they have not been put out on anything other than mobile and PC. Oh, okay, okay, cool. So you're, you're not doing anything extra in there. That was a bot copy that you're playing on stream. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just from Steam. It's really fun to come by and see those. Uh, that would be at uh, twitch.tv slash craftless rogue. Because yeah, like, you'll, you'll be finding Diabolos or something, or I'll, I'll swing by. Well, actually, for a while there, I kept swinging by, and you were trying to find a T-Rex really badly for a very long time. Yeah, that was eight. <laughs> did you <laughs> find your T-Rex? I fought a T-Rex. I did. Okay. Did you get the yeah. sword you were looking for or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. But yeah, I mean, the seven, eight, nine, you know, once you kind of get out of the Super NES era, like modding those is certainly trickier. I've had to do more. So you have seen me play seven. I played through that modded um, and kind of making the backgrounds looking good. Eight, I tried to mod and I just had a, a hard time with it. Nine was actually really easy to mod and play. And uh, so those are, you can still do those. Those were all versions bought on Steam. Um, but you may need to do a little more work to get it to look okay. Like the PlayStation era has not aged well. Um, not well at all. That's fair. 
that was very fair. Well, we have some other questions here more in the uh, spoiler department. What I can do for the chat here is I can uh, take off my earphones and you can, the MS curator can let you know some of his favorite things about the game. But as for the show proper, we'll be ending it here. Uh, by the way, patrons, shout out to our patrons again. Support our bromance.com. We always want to thank our badass patrons. Thank you so much to our legendary producers, Sean B, Mike R, Stephen J, Wayra E, Das, Cheesy Bob, Sean. And Gary has a personal note here about the spelling of Sean. With an E. A, B. Sean B. I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. This is Garrett's part. So I'm doing all right. Uh, when Garrett's back, uh, you can find him. Uh, when, well, you can always find him at, at Garrett Art on Twitter. He will return next week. Uh, otherwise, you can find me here on the YouTube. But John, you're, you're the guest. Please dispense the many places across the internet where you can be found and spoken to. Best way to find me is follow me on Twitter as well. It's at John underscore Jagger. That's John, just J-O-N. And uh, you can also catch me streaming twitch.tv slash craftless rogue. Uh, you can see all my uh, all my playthroughs up there or on YouTube. Craftless Rogue on YouTube, actually. I don't know why I didn't plug that. That's where I put all the VODs. So you can go back and watch me play through uh, any of the Final Fantasies 1 through 9, uh, working on 10 at the moment and making my way through that. Craftless because you don't craft? Uh, yeah, I have no, no craft experience. No, yeah, uh, craft. Craftless, just I used to I used to go by Crafty Rogue, and I don't remember why it switched to Craftless. It has something to do with my wife. But I don't think she's watching right now. So the fact that I can't remember <laughs> is okay. Awesome. Well, thank you again, John, for joining for this episode. And we'll see you all next week. Take care. <laughs>